So I wanted to do a video and talk about some of the special clients we work with. And this is not representative all Detroit manufacturing, but there's a lot of this here. And this is a area we live in and the type of clients we end up with uh, in this area. So here is Detroit proper, Detroit the city. Here's where we are. And uh, specifically, we our office is uh, right here. So this is the, uh, whoop, there it is. Lawrence Systems PC pickup. Our actual building is right here. So that puts us in what we're referred to as the Downriver area because it's Downriver. And not that this is overly relevant to it, but it's kind of to show what clients we have around here. And as you can see, when you start looking, even against the water here, it's all industrial, not houses. A lot of people are used to seeing that. So we actually have a lot of manufacturing here. And it's a big part of what goes on downriver. Right here is the actual, uh, one of the Chrysler facilities, some neighborhoods, uh, some of these other larger buildings. Some of these are our clients that are well within some of these. There's actually a quarry right down the street, a rock quarry. So it's not rural exactly, but it's heavy manufacturing. And I bring it up because sometimes people ask us, like, do you have big clients or little clients? And we don't focus on any one single vertical. We are in a lot of different markets. And there's not a ton of professional services companies in our area. There are a lot of these manufacturing clients. And some of them, it's really interesting because you see the size of these buildings, you know, 20, 30,000 foot buildings, if not even some are even bigger than that. Massive warehousing, lots of machines and rows of them, but not a lot of technology. And this is one we recently picked up. Now, what kind of happens is, is I'm not going to say it's not their fault, but it's kind of not in a different way. Their cousin starts working on the IT and they didn't really need IT. They've been in business since 1940, whatever. They've been punching. One of them still has a time clock on the wall. I should have took a picture of it. Um, like the physical punch clocks are still on the wall there. Now, they employ a lot of people. They're manufacturing parts, and especially in the, related to the automotive, either directly to an automotive supplier or a support part related to the automotive, which means it'll be like something integrated in within the supply chain itself. And this is a frequent thing we come into is kind of not just messy IT rooms. If you look down here, you're looking at a really old server, not just kind of old, like it's still working and it's a Pentium 3 server from, I don't know, around what, 2006 or so for this compact server. And But this is what it looks like inside of some of these places that have this. It's a large, you know, this is just the support building for... I think it's, yeah, this photo here. So these are two separate buildings. Uh, they're VPN together because they're actually a few miles apart. Uh, so they're VPN together. They have different internet services. And it's uh, kind of amazing to me when you see this, you're like, wow, look at all of this stuff and all these people working here and machines and everything else. Um, but there's not a lot of technology here. There is three computers that run on. I'm only standing like partway through this building. Uh, it goes in the other direction quite a bit. I was taking a picture of the Unify that we installed up here because they needed Wi-Fi to service the three computers that they need to make this, <laughs> make this place run. So it's kind of interesting, uh, but it's one of those perspectives that you're when you're setting up your company you're like okay what target targets am i go after some people think oh do you go after manufacturing I'm like sometimes but a lot of them it's just interesting that they don't need a lot of technology they also have dealt with in a very simple way server outages they just switch back to paper because paper for them wasn't that long ago they've been using paper quite a bit so the server ups and downs and having a, a less than stellar IT back end for them has been only recently come a problem because more of the vendors are forcing them to interact online. Matter of fact, their most critical is that the shipping department, which I'm actually standing on the roof of, uh, has internet all the time so they can print the shipping labels to get the orders out that go on these pallets. And then you can see them getting packaged down here. This was the server room for that big building. This is it. That's all the infrastructure it takes to run that entire company. There's a lot of people working here and they make a lot of stuff. They are, I'm not gonna say they're like the biggest, but they're a decent sized manufacturing company when you look at some of these. Um, and this is some of the machines. Uh, this is when it wasn't connecting because the Wi-Fi was too slow until we put the Unify in, which works wonderful, by the way, inside of here. That's one of the solutions provided from. Yes, that kind of looks shiny because yes, that's the oil that kind of gets on the machines here. <laughs> and it's, 
Yeah, it's a, it's a problem there because these machines use oil for the cutting tools and that oil just kind of gets on things. They're always mopping it up and manufacturing is not glamorous by no means. Uh, and matter of fact, they have the tube monitors because apparently it was messing up the other ones, but the tube monitors seem to survive this perfectly fine. So they keep them around. They're still in use. Now, this is a different company altogether. That's the ma machining, machine tool automotive. This is another manufacturing company. It's just kind of the same thing. They're interesting clients to do support for because they don't want to replace this machine. Well, why don't they want to replace it? Well, this machine is very expensive. It cuts uh, wood for, um, I think, cabinetry. Their primary client is selling it to like your large companies like Lowe's or Home Depot. They're a wholesale behind the scenes, not a direct seller. And this is just one of, I think they have 20 of these units that are just cutting all the time. They keep the place clean. These vacuums on top pull away all the wood chips and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. But this is the part that you're going to laugh about. And this is one of those ain't broke, don't fix it. Someone's going, but it's a security risk running OS2 warp. You can never pass like a security audit. Yeah, they don't do security audits. This is all offline. Uh, they go in here, they punch in the coordinates um, through the keyboard here. And what you're seeing here was me doing a listing on it. They had a, I did run check disk and to get it back up and running and, uh, you know, fix a corrupt file on a disk. And away we go. Their OS2 warp machine is back up and running. And you run into that a lot with some of these companies. They automated to a point. And they won't go further unless there's like a real market push for it. But from an IT standpoint, it's really strange because this company, although is a multi-million dollar company with a whole sales process and a, a team of people, their front office runs on, I think, four computers and a shared QuickBooks file. And it's... Doctors' offices, for example, some of our doctors, lawyers, other professional services offices spend a, about 10 times what these guys spend. So manufacturing is kind of a weird market. It, it's one of the reasons why we have some things that we're working on. And people say, oh, that's an older piece of equipment, or do you go after small businesses? And how do you categorize this company? In sales dollars, they're a larger company. In technology dollars, they don't like spending a lot of money, but it's hard to convince them otherwise because they've always done it this way. Um, as long as we can keep fixing their OS2 warp machines, they won't really pay them. It's not like I can, because this OS2 warp machine interfaces via this here directly to make the cutting machine work. So it, this is an entire process replacement. They're, they have teams of people that know how to punch coordinates um, into OS2 warp and make it cut the things. Matter of fact, they got all profiles saved across all of these uh, to punch out the different parts that they need done. They load up the raw material, it cuts it out to the spec, and away they go. So it's just one of those things I want to talk about a little bit where it, it's interesting, um, but it's hard when you target these clients, and word of mouth has gotten us a lot of them, um, but they're not necessarily who we go after. They just happen to be who's here and what makes this little area we're in a little bit different when it comes to manufacturing uh, because they're able to run these businesses with very little technology, but they do need that level of support, and we've been bringing in more technology, and it's, it's interesting to, to have the aha moments with them because they just have been doing things in such a really basic way with three-part forms and uh, one of them that we had we had to order dot matrix printers for because they were not ready to give up that even though they were ready to go to a electronic way of bookkeeping they got quickbooks for the first time they've been in business since the 30s um was one of the other clients we have they finally decided that you know they're okay we can start printing these invoices but one invoice for them could be forty thousand dollars so it's not like they have a big quantity of invoice to add up to a million dollars in sales, their invoices are thirty dollars or $40,000 a piece because they're dealing with large-scale B2B work. But uh, this is just kind of a you know random. I was just looking through some of the pictures we took at some of these clients and uh, what we deal with them. But it's I want to share a little bit behind the scenes on there. So, um, I'm not necessarily nostalgic for old hardware, but there's it's interesting to see how much of a demand there is on a lot of this old hardware. And I understand uh, to, like, to them, like, oh, you know, they deal with Windows 10 in a front office. They're like, we can't have a machine that loads updates and reboots randomly. We're not ready for, you know, some of the offerings that these companies have on these embedded systems. Not to mention, they ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, there's not a market reason to 
replace some of these machines, it's uh, something you kind of have to work in there and realize that they're going to have these old machines and supporting them. Hey, you know what? I'm old enough that I know how to run DOS and check disk because I was around when OS2 was around. Uh, but it's just, like I said, well, those one-offs, I was looking through it today. We did some more support for one of these clients the other day. And yeah, it's it's kind of a mess working on them sometimes, uh, especially when you walk into this, which this one is a cleanup work in, pros, in progress of getting all this in here. But the other side of it is they just don't have this massive need for technology. So uh, just some insight, some thoughts, and a little bit of behind the scenes of what we do. Matter of fact, I think I do have the cleanup picture of this one. We did get this one. I think it's done. Steve, said, Steve took a picture of it. Yeah, here's the cleaned up picture. It improved a lot. I'd love to sell them something brand new. That's not always in their budget. It's kind of baby steps with them because, you know, technology, they've been in business a long time. They've been profitable a long time. So it's always hard because they just look at technology as an expense. But we've been working with them and at least it starts with the cleanup so we can at least find the things that are uh, mounted here. And you notice in the previous photo that didn't have rack ears at all. So it is an improvement. It's not perfect. We know uh, this is what the budget would call for it and it's now manageable that's the important part and even though uh this is not the right rack ears because I, I don't know what the other it guy who they had did with the rack ears which was of course some engineer that worked there who started dinking with computers and not really a professional it person is how it got like this but we're bringing them along and they're coming with us on a ride to the uh, use of more technology and getting this stuff cleaned up well that's all i really have to say like i said i just wanted to share some of the uh, interesting facets of working with large manufacturing companies in this downriver Detroit area that we do. And uh, it just, like I said, it amazes me all the lack of technology, but this is the foundation of, you know, the vehicles we ride in. These are, they make the parts that go into it. Uh, they make the cabinets that you install in your house, but there's not necessarily a lot of technology driving all of this. Uh, so if you're an entrepreneur and looking to get into one of these markets, it probably could use a little efficiency and improvement, um, but it's hard to, to see the company that's been around for 60 years doing this. Uh, so to food for thought, just wanted to share it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.